Welcome to Call of Plastic. I'm your host, Bill Greenwater. In this episode, we're reviewing the Adventure Force 100-piece Army Bucket. Adventure Force is a Walmart brand launched in 2016, and the Army Bucket so far is only available at walmart.com and in Walmart stores. You can find other Adventure Force sets online at Amazon, which include everything from dinosaurs and farm animals to fire trucks and toy guns. All right, let's recon. Starting out, we have a nice sturdy lid with a carry handle. Before you open this, pay attention to how everything is arranged inside. This is how you want to rearrange it if you want to fit everything back inside the bucket. This set is your classic green versus tan, and each side supported by a tank. Uh, but then we quickly realized that there's only one paratrooper. We have a green paratrooper, but the tan paratrooper is missing in action. According to the labeling, there's clearly a tan paratrooper also displayed. We conducted a head count, and I thought I would be missing a tan soldier, but it turns out that there is one extra tan versus the green. All right, let's lay out everything else to make sure we have a full 100 pieces. We have tents, barrels, ammo crates, 10 barbed wire pieces, four rocks, two sandbag emplacements, and two bunkers, and six wall pieces. That adds up to a total of 101 pieces. So the good news is we weren't shorted a piece, but we did gain one extra soldier, it appears. There are a total of 10 stances, plus the green paratrooper. Each side has at least three units, with the tans maintaining one extra grenadier and one extra bazookaman. At the inspection lineup, we see a lower degree of detail. The faces and weapons aren't as defined, and neither are the wrinkles of the clothing. The snipers appear to be aiming upward, while the riflemen have their sights downward, not straight ahead. And the gunners also appear to be aiming upward. That being said, everything is consistent as there are no unfinished molds. Some of you high-rise chevrons out there are probably twisting yourself into a pretzel, screaming, Bill, Bill, these are knockoffs, dude. These are, these are total knockoffs. Well, you think I don't know that? But you have to think about other viewers, specifically new plastic commanders, that may not be aware that this set is a knockoff. Others may look at this and think, this is a cool set, which it is. And for what it's worth, each soldier is consistent, every mold is consistent, not counting the MIA-10 paratrooper. This is a decent set. But I want my viewers, no matter what rank they are, to understand that these are replicas. The replicas of an old favorite of mine, Timmy. Exhibit A, the Machine Gunner. On the right, the Adventure Force replica. And on the left, obviously, the Timmy original. And once you've seen it, it cannot be unseen. The level of detail between the two are night and day. You can see the webbing on the helmet of the Timmy. The face of the original is much more realistic than the blobby looking replica. The hands of the original are proportionate as opposed to the Adventure Force replica. The machine gun itself has a bipod. The barrel is better defined as is the magazine. And you even notice lacing on the boots of the Timmy original. The same contrast in detail hold true for the other figures as well. It's not that this is a bad set, but I simply want you as the viewer to be aware that before purchasing this set, that this is a replica of something else that features a higher degree of craftsmanship. Keeping you informed and helping you make a decision that you're happy with is the purpose of this channel. I would hate for you to buy something and then come to regret it thinking, oh gosh, I, I bought this, but I could have gotten that if only someone would have told me. Well, I consider it my duty as someone to tell you. Now, if you want to ascertain a comparable set of Timmy originals, be prepared to pay two or three times as much. And heads up, let's talk about the paratrooper. He is a lone wolf going behind enemy lines, perhaps to rescue POWs or to scout enemy locations or to balance the numbers out between the extra tan versus the green. His parachute has been tucked in nice and tight. The challenge will be to put it back exactly the way you found it. 
there are a series of strings attached around a loop above his head that go to the parachute. And remember, the parachute is plastic, so don't pull and tug too hard. The parachute fully extended is about 10 inches in diameter. That's approximately 25 centimeters for our Canada and beyond viewers. And we can positively say that the parachute will work. Uh, we have to work on the landing zone a little bit. Okay, now we move on to the props. With this set, you get a total of 10 barbed wire sections. Each one comprised of a soft plastic and they all stand well on their own. The two tents are textured on the outside and are tall enough to accommodate standing units. They feature one fully open side while the other side is loosely drawn. There are six ammo crates divided evenly into sets of two, one set bearing M16s with grenade launchers, the other has mortars, and the last two contain maybe rockets for the bazooka or perhaps a different munition for the mortar. You also have four barrels. Now these could be filled with anything from gasoline for the tanks or chemical weapons. WMDs, weapons of mass destruction. destruction. Oh, they could just be harmless Agent Orange. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It is highly advised that you keep these away from units and soft targets like your tents, but you can choose to take the paintball route and use them as cover. Next up are the sandbag formations. These are broad enough to take up a decent amount of space, and they have a depression in the middle that the machine gunner can take full advantage of. Then we have two bunkers with dual battlements, these can accommodate two machine gunners each, making them a strong point for defense. And they do in fact pass the clearance evaluation. Of course, that's not hard to do when the machine guns are facing the sky. There are two sets of modular walls, a green set and a tan set. The brick face is clean and the connection joints fit perfectly at the zero and 90 degree angle. You can attempt to use these walls as standalones but given that they're thin, they may tip over easy. Be advised, pesky tan snipers are sure to take advantage of the peepholes at the bottom. And finally, you have four large rocks hollowed on the inside. Each one sits flat on a hard surface. These provide a proper fighting position for your prone units, but they are also just tall enough to give decent cover to your machine gunner. And we move on to the tanks. These are based off of the M48 Patton. They're a decent size compared to the soldiers and provide a good amount of cover. As with the soldiers, these are also replicas. Side by side, the tanks are much better knockoffs than the soldiers. The detailing between the two is mostly similar, with Timmy obviously possessing more pronounced lines and contouring. It's hard not to notice the glossy shine of the Timmys, but the shine itself isn't necessarily better. I actually prefer the matte finish of the Adventure Force. The Timmys are just a tad bit bigger, both in length and in height. The Adventure Force tanks have two sets of wheels at the bottom, but the Timmys simply have notches that protrude from beneath the tracks. Both of the tan tanks have a close color match, but the Adventure Force green is more of a forest green, whereas the Timmy is a classic olive drab. All things considered, the Adventure Force 100-piece bucket is a solid set Still would have liked to have seen that tan paratrooper, but as we discovered, we had one extra piece in total. I hope this video helped inform and educate you a little bit. If so, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below what else you'd like to see reviewed. And until next time, my fellow plastic tacticians, be safe, and we'll see you soon.